Thunderfoot misses Venom Fang X. Dear Venom Fang X, I get the comment of why do I waste my time with you with an increasing frequency. The answer is simple. You are a poster boy for creationist stupidity, and as such you are fantastic for demonstrating to the important demographic of middle America and elsewhere the contrast between scientifically illiterate creationists versus scientifically literate academics and what they bring to civilization. Thunderfoot has been trying his best to bait someone into replacing him. Thunderfoot wants a poster boy for Islamic stupidity. Recently, Daba Films almost became that poster boy. Almost. Like a bad poker player, Thunderfoot played his hand too strongly by sensationalizing the entire issue as a censorship battle, and too many people simply didn't buy into it. Fortunately for Thunderfoot, a new hand has been dealt to him as Dawa Films has recently challenged him to open debate. While I can only hope Dawa Films knows what he's doing, if there's any other Muslims out there watching this video, let me remind you that what Thunderfoot desires most right now is for some zealous and infuriated individual to open their mouths and say the wrong thing on camera. On May 20th, 2010, Islam's holiest prophet will be mocked and insulted under the facade of protecting free speech. As that day approaches, remind yourselves that jihad starts from within. Keep your cool, act rationally, calculate your moves, and simply be a reflection of what Islam is supposed to be. Nothing more, nothing less. More words to follow on this issue in the days to come. You know, I've been a long time subscriber of Thunderfoot. And I mean long time, like back when he was making videos on the Iraq war and before he was even known as a pro-science channel. Reviewing those first few videos really put into perspective how much he's changed since then. There was one video in particular though that really struck me. It was the fourth video he made where he lamented the similarities between Vietnam and Iraq. Specifically how a preemptive war was launched based on incorrect or speculative hypotheses, how indiscriminate bombings are fueling a growing insurgency, and the presence of fierce patriots who label all those who disagree with the government cowards, traitors, or carrying the enemy's message. As I watched that video, I began to think about the parallels with his recent videos against Islam. It is, after all, a battle over free speech and democracy. It is fought between the Western world and scientifically illiterate savages who care nothing for what we hold dear. It is a battle of ants and gods. We did not start this conflict. It is we enlightened people, we gods who stand within the light, who are attacked by the ants of the darkness. It is they who declare this war, they who encroach upon our tribe, and they whom through our might we shall vanquish. Our enemy are cowardly folk. They are unsuitable for first world living. They are incompatible with the western world. You know, like that Van Gogh guy you killed. Yeah, stabbing and shooting an unarmed man. Yeah, that's... Uh showcase of the virtues of Islam. Such divine inspired courage. After all, there's no better way of showing that yours is the religion of peace and enlightenment than by shooting and stabbing an unarmed man, and then threatening others with the same fate. And yet, of course, the criticism of the moderate Muslims was conspicuous only by its absence, and that really does speak volumes of their attitude to these acts. There are no innocent Muslims, only those that shoot at you and those who keep their mouths shut in silent approval. They have formed an alliance of convenience between themselves for they know that their primitive and corrupt ways can never survive the light of democracy. They hate our democracy, they hate our freedom. Our enemy are the Muslims who threaten our freedom of speech. Our enemy are the Islamic nations who kill people over cartoons. Our enemy is Islam, whether it be promulgated from individuals or institutions. It is Islam that has no place in the first world. They who live in the dark ages, they who murder film directors, they who threaten free speech through intimidation. This is not the time for cowardice, but bold patriotism. There were those who were willing to stand and fight for their free speech against those who would attempt to stifle it through threats of violence. And there were also the cowards who were willing to roll over and play dead at the first sign of things going awry. Viacom actively chose to stab in the back those who were fighting against those trying to limit freedom of speech from threats of violence. You miserable cowards! It sickens me to think of such amoral, yellow-bellied parasites such as yourself growing fat profits of sucking the rich blood off the western civilization that you would betray for the price of an extra value meal.
I was willing to put my life on the table as collateral, just to give some depth to the voices defending free speech. Against this, what do you think you could possibly have to intimidate me with? We know who they are and what they want. These people understand that Islam cannot withstand open scrutiny, else obviously it would have embraced the concept. And thus an alliance of convenience has been formed between the moderate weekend Muslims and the extremists who latently perceive that for their religion to survive, free speech must be either castrated or destroyed. And they exist only because we pity them. But let's say that all your box cutters and shooting and stabbing unarmed filmmakers, you manage to actually threaten the enlightened world. And I mean threatened beyond crashing a few airliners. Your only achievement will have been to have awakened a sleeping giant and to have filled it with a terrible resolve. If you're going to pray to Allah for anything, beg him that you never meet the giant in such a mood. For your continued existence is entirely at the discretion and goodwill of the giant, and that it is all that stands between you being granted continued existence, and you receiving yourself the self-same judgment that you would so zealously impose on the rest of the world if only you had the power. Are we not merciful? Free speech must be defended zealously, zealously, if our civilization is to endure. We enlightened people must either stand together in defiance or fall like dominoes as Islam encroaches itself further and further to the detriment of the first world. If we do not stop censorship here and now, all over Southeast Asia, all over the Pacific, in the Mideast, in Europe, in the world, the United States would suffer a blow. And peace, because we are the great peacekeeping nation in the world today because of our power, would suffer a blow from which it might not recover. Welcome to you, Nam. You're either with us or against us.